While many people know about the Korean War, few are aware that Ethiopia was one of the 16 nations to send troops to defend South Korea. In 1951, the Emperor of Ethiopia decided to send thousands of his own soldiers to fight the Communists alongside the American-led UN Coalition Force. This group of soldiers was called the Cagnu Battalion and was sourced from the Emperor's own Imperial Bodyguards. The soldiers of the Ethiopian Imperial Bodyguard were elite infantrymen trained by the Swedish military in the 1930s. As described by the newspaper, Kansas City Star. Virtually all range from 6 feet to 6 feet 4 inches in height, and all appear lean and rangy. The battalion is made up of the palace guard, and it means that every man in the outfit has been carefully selected for superb physical condition and fighting qualities. Prior to their deployment to Korea, the men of the Cagnu Battalion received rigorous training in the mountains of Ethiopia for 8 months. However, no amount of training would prepare them for the unforgiving cold of the Korean mountains. It was the first time any of these men had encountered snow. Sergeant Asfa Abib, a soldier of the Cagnu Battalion, said, It was very cold. Only our eyes were visible and everything else was covered. There is no other country with more snow than Korea. Upon arriving in Korea, the men of the Cagnu Battalion linked up with the U.S. Army's 7th Infantry Division, 32nd Infantry Regiment. There, they were issued American weapons and equipment. They soon formed a fearsome reputation for their ability at night fighting and their commitment to never be captured by the enemy. The Ethiopians' motto was, Never be captured on the war field. This would be put to the ultimate test. Second Lieutenant Mamo Haptiwold was a member of the 3rd Cagnu Battalion, which, in 1953, was embedded with the Americans on the front lines near Pork Chop Hill. One fateful night, Mamo led a small 15-man squad down the hill to scout out the nearby terrain. Unknown to him, a force of 300 Chinese soldiers lay in wait nearby. In the ensuing ambush, four members of his patrol were killed instantly, and everyone else was wounded to some degree. In the ensuing chaos, a Chinese soldier tried to take Mamo's radio operator prisoner, but Mamo shot him and killed him with his rifle, saving the man. Several Chinese then charged the Ethiopian's position, only to be blown to bits by Mamo's hand grenade. The reality of the situation was just now setting in. The Ethiopians were outnumbered 20 to 1. The fighting continued sporadically throughout the night. Cut off from reinforcements and wounded, Mamo worried that they would not be able to hold out for much longer. He knew that his only hope was to radio his position to the Americans for artillery support, but all three of his radios were destroyed. Despite losing consciousness several times from blood loss, Mamo went to go look for a radio. I just looked for a weapon from one of the dead men, and when the Chinese attacked, I would shoot, and when it was quiet, I would look for a radio. Eventually, Mamo found a working radio, and radioed in his coordinates to the Americans. Within minutes, artillery was hitting on target, halting the Chinese from advancing. Under the cover of artillery and smoke grenades, reinforcements reached Mamo and his men, and they withdrew back to safety. Out of his patrol, Mamo was the only one left standing. All of his men were either dead or seriously wounded and needed immediate medical attention. Back at base, Mamo reflected on what had just happened. They all went to the hospital. I was the only one who went back to the bunker. It is like a man who is living with his family and all the family is dead and he returns to an empty house. That is how I felt. I was so sorry. I was very depressed. Second Lieutenant Mamo Habtuwag was awarded the Order of the Star of Ethiopia, Ethiopia's highest military honor. He was also awarded the Silver Star by the Americans for valor in action. Mamo and his comrades of the Cagnu Battalion returned to Ethiopia as heroes. Not a single man had been captured by the enemy, and all 121 of their dead had returned home.